Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing fresh Del Monte Produce's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Fresh Del Monte Produce is a global producer, marketer, and distributor of fresh and fresh cut fruits and vegetables. The company is headquartered in Georgetown, Kentucky and was founded in 1989. It went public in 97 and currently trades on the NASDAQ. It is also a producer and distributor of prepared fruit and vegetables, juices, beverages, snacks, and desserts. Fresh Del Monte Produce was created in 1989 when RJR Nabisco sold the fresh fruit division of Del Monte Foods. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1.3 billion market cap. They're trading at $28 a share and they have 47 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has positive and pretty consistent free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's positive in three of the four years, negative in 2018. Revenue is a sales for the company. That's pretty consistent, around four to four and a half billion dollars a year. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Example is the cost of labor. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. They had their lowest gross profit in 2020 at a quarter billion. Below that is operating expenses. Examples are depreciation and marketing. Then below that is operating income, which was also the lowest in 2020 at 55 million. They pay $21 million of interest on their debt, which is lower than 2018 and 19, but that number is more than triple what it paid in 2017. Then below that is other income and expenses. This is usually impairments or write-offs. Then your pre-tax income, your taxes, and the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. And that's 49 million in 2020. It was negative in 2018 due to the negative 62 million dollars in other income and expenses. But I would focus on operating income when I look at the income statement, not net income. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they do have positive free cash flow each year. So they're able to pay a dividend each year since they have excess cash remaining. Another way to reward shareholders is to buy back stock. When a company buys back stock, it decreases the shares outstanding, making your shares more valuable. They bought back 142 million in 2017 then 29 million, 18 million, and 21 million. In 2017, they issued 800 million of debt, paid down about 700 million. They increased their debt about 100 million dollars in 2017. They increased their debt 300 million in 2018, but they decreased their debt in 2019 and 2020. Let's look at the capital structure. 1.7 billion dollars of equity, 700 million of debt. Their 72% equity, 28% debt. And their WAC is 6.3%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for. That's 2.3 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $2 billion. We divide that by 47 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $43. They're trading at 28, so they're trading at a 34% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is even higher than me. They're at $59 a share, so they're also saying the stock is undervalued. This is the stock price the last five years. It looks like it hit pretty close to $65 at one point, but it's come all the way down to $29, so it's sitting at a really low point relative to its all-time highs. So it looks like it could be a really good value. The company was paying a $0.15 cent dividend, but now it's down to $0.10. Cents. It's a 1.41% dividend yield. They pay out 39% of their net income and 62% of their free cash flow. The bottom 25% of the market pays a 1.3% dividend. This company is a little higher than the bottom 25%. 
This company's industry pays a 2.6% dividend. Analysts are forecasting this company to cut their dividend to zero in the next three years. They have a beta of 0.76, so the stock moves a little less than a market. The stock has gone down 9% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 49%. The 52-week low is $20, the high was $35. The stock is trading below its 50-day, but above its 200-day moving average. About 150,000 shares are traded each day on this stock. 70% of the shares are held by institutions, and 4% of the shares on float are shorted. In the past one year, three years, and five years, this stock has really struggled relative to its industry and the market. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 32%, while its industry grows 11% and the market grows 19%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 4%, its industry 3%, and the market 10%. In the past five years, their earnings decreased 34%, its industry decreased 3% and the market increased 12%. In the past year, their earnings decreased 24%, its industry grew 10% and the market grew 3%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, your investment would have peaked at $26,000, but if you're still holding on, you'd be down to $12,800 today. That's a 2.5% annual return. FMR is the biggest shareholder, then the CEO at 15%, BlackRock, Dimensional Fund, and Vanguard. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average P.E. in the market is 32. The median is 22. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 27.3, so investors are paying $27 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 0.3. That's a really good price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 0.8. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have 1.7 billion of equity, 1.2 billion of tangible equity, since they have about 600 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. Their return on invested capital is only 2.1%, and their WAC is 6.3%, which implies they're losing 4.3 cents every dollar they invest in their company. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They can cover their interest payments two and a half times. ROE is net income over equity. They're at 3%. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can easily cover their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are 400 million of receivables and 500 million of inventory. They do seem to be well capitalized. They only had $31 million of free cash flow, but they have over 450 million of working capital and they pay $19 million in dividend payments. So they have $469 million of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry I've done videos of two other companies in the same industry as FDP, and if FDP has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they have the worst PE of all three companies. They do have the best price to sales and price to book of the three. Their current ratio is in the middle of the three. They have the lowest ROE, they're lowest in debt, and they're the smallest company on this list, much smaller than Tyson's. And they pay the lowest dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 34% discount, their products are pretty known around the world, they have a good brand name, and their predecessor company, Del Monte, has been around since the late 1800s. I ranked their free cash flow 4 out of 10, their revenue 6 out of 10, and their ratio 6 out of 10. So let me know what you think, give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.